Hey, Ronnie. Hello. You know how uh, Matt Barnes used to play for the Kings? I do remember that. And then he would take a three-point shot and make it. They'd go, Barnes for three. That's not what they were saying. No. They were saying, Barnes likes tree. <laughs> 420 News is next on the next Men Are So Smart. You may have suspected it, but we have a story that says 80% NBA NFL athletes estimate marijuana use among players is higher than 80%. Mm. Former NBA player Kenyon Martin, the number one pick in the 2000 draft, said in an interview with Bleacher Report published last week that he believes 85% of the league smoked marijuana during his career. Uh, former tight end Martellus Bennett thought the number was even higher in the NFL where injuries and physical pain are more prevalent. Uh, I want to say about 89% of the NFL use marijuana, Bennett told Bleacher Report in a separate interview among former NFL players. Interestingly enough, marijuana is one of the NBA and NFL's banned substances with a failed drug test leading to a suspension and fine even for players in states where marijuana is legal. Former NFL player John Moffitt noted that the league is essentially looking away by only testing once a year. Yeah, Matt Barnes, another former NBA player from Sacramento, I might add, who retired after the 2016-17 season, said he smoked pot before games throughout his 14-year career. He also said there was a hypocrisy among NBA teams top brass when it came to marijuana use. Yeah, he says the GMs, the coaches, presidents, we're all smoking. I mean, it goes deeper than what you think, Barnes said. Some of the people that are cracking whips and suspending us are the ones that are actually smoking weed, too. Uh, former NFL defensive lineman Sean Smith said he used to smoke two blunts before every game over the span of his 10 seasons in the league. He kind of also echoed Barnes' point. Shoot, coaches do it. Personnel does it. People upstairs do it, Smith said. Quarterbacks, guys that are your captains, leaders of the team smoke. Everybody has their reason. Most do it for their pain. You know, and I, I guess I get that. And if it's legal, it's legal. But um, I don't know. I, I know that some... There are a couple of good examples of NFL players whose careers were cut drastically short. Ricky. Yeah, you were thinking of the same guy. Bell? Is that his name? No. Uh, God darn, he played for the Dolphins. He, mm -hmm. Unbelievable talent. Running back. Yes, unbelievable talent. And uh, could not stay off marijuana. And... You know what? I, I assume that as a running back, you hurt every day when you wake up. When you get up out of bed, it hurts. You know, it's funny you mention that because uh, having played a lot of football in a younger day, uh, I suffer from those decisions that I made back then uh, with pain right now. And I, I certainly do understand that. Um, but, you know... I can't imagine what a running back has to go through um, because I would get hit on every play blocking a person, but a running back is a guy that you're trying to tackle and bring down because he has the ball, and they get hit so hard on every play that they touch the ball. Well, and they, you know, and the good running backs, they don't go down the first time somebody hits them. They ping pong, yeah. you know, and they mm -hmm. they kind of go, they bounce off people. Uh, I look at, uh, like, Marshawn Lynch. Mm -hmm. Man, he delivers as much pain as he as he receives. Absolutely, he's a truck. Oh, and, I, God, I just can't even imagine what it, what it feels like. Uh, the running back we're thinking of is Ricky Williams. Right, Ricky Williams, Ricky Williams, of course. Yeah, yeah um, so... 
you know, I'm I mean, sympathetic to it. And like I said, here in California, if you play for the Broncos or if you play, you know, we're in a state where it's legal, I'm kind of okay with it. But um, NFL is is not. Why? Why do you think that is? I mean, if it's predominant, as predominant as they say in this story, then is is it them turning a blind eye? Much the same as Major League Baseball did with steroids? I, I think that probably in the long run, it might be good for the game for them to mm, just kind of ignore it a little bit. You test them at the beginning of the season. Uh, and I think that's kind of hypocritical. It is. Uh, it's absolutely hypocritical. However, I'm sure they're looking out for their bottom line. Uh, but what what is it that marijuana would do to these players if smoked during the game? It's not like it's a PED. Right. Um, if anything, it would make them more mellow in a, in a game that, and I'm speaking the NFL, is so intense on every single play, only for a certain amount of seconds each play. Right. But still intense. Well, and instead of... Uh... You know, like inhaling oxygen between plays, they'd be, in, be inhaling Cheetos. So maybe there's just not enough Cheetos in the world. I would, don't know. Would Would you consider that to be prescription Cheetos? <laughs> and are Cheetos one of the drugs they test for in the NFL? <laughs> They're not. Am I just making up? I'm not making up these questions. So I have a I have a good buddy. Uh, I worked with him in the sheriff's department. He worked in our division called home detention. So let's guys that have an offense, a, a fairly, you know, not, in, inconsequential. Yeah, culture. not yeah, not a terribly, you know, nothing violent, no violent crimes, but um, somebody that got arrested for doing something that has a job, they can do their arrest time at home. But they have to go in and test weekly. Oh, make sure they're not they haven't drank alcohol or taking any drugs and you know whatever else the the conditions of their parole are. Well, through that job because he had experience using the machine that tests them for all these different drugs in their system, he got a job with the local baseball team, the Sacramento River Cats, doing the same thing. They test their players there. It's total random testing. Um, and so he's gotten to know some of the River Cats. Well, he said some of the players, especially if they're getting ready to be called up to the bigs, they may get tested maybe like twice a week. Because uh, these guys, they play two or three games a week usually. Uh, they could get tested quite often. One of, And Sacramento River Cats is a farm team for the uh, San Francisco Giants. Now, right now, and so he mentioned a name the other day of a guy that's he has personally tested two times, and so he says he's definitely he's on his way to going up to the bigs right now. So he passed. He does. He he passed. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, but you know, I like it, like we said, I I think that the way they're testing him probably is opening the door for. Allowing them to use marijuana. Yeah. Huh. Well, I you know I I don't know, but it would seem to me that it's just a matter of time before, I would say as many as maybe forty eight states uh, legalize marijuana. Yep. We've seen and 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 we've seen that it's become a crash a uh, cash crop for uh, states that have done it. Yeah. And it's going right to their bottom line. Yep. Um, I read an article the other day. I was talking about how hospitals are seeing an extremely increased incidence of teens coming in thinking that they're overdosing on marijuana. Oh, well, today's marijuana is way more potent yeah, than back true. in the days. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I'm, because it's legal, I'm okay with it. Yeah. But for sports teams, if the league prohibits it, then I guess they have to at least go through the motions of testing. And uh, I know that if you're a first-time offender, it's typically, you know, 
a couple of days off without pay type right, thing. And, right. You know. Yeah. So. All right, let's wrap up. Somebody fire up the bong. It's time to wrap up 420 <laughs> News. That'll do it for us. This has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. Hope you enjoyed. We hope you learned something. If you did, do us a favor. Like the episode. Doesn't take much. Just point it and tap that button. Looks like that. Uh, also, while you're there, subscribe to our channel. That way, you'll get a notification when the another episode of the Rich Chewy Goodness you come to know as the Men Are So Smart show is available. And the New Get Center. Oh, mm, nougat, mm. chewy nougat. <laughs> uh, we are seen every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, wherever you may be watching in the world, and that's when you can catch our new episodes. Below, you'll find all of the information on both of us, including our email addresses, our website, our social media, and, of course, our sponsors who make this program possible. Couldn't do it without them. Thank you so much, you guys. Yep. That'll do it. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you next time on Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.